Welcome to this special Soul Star broadcast, Space Wi-Fi, connecting everyone and everything in space. I am your host, Lisa Dreyer, and I'm excited to introduce our guest for today, Tony Colucci. He is the a Soul Star board member and advisor. Welcome to this special broadcast, Tony. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to be here. Yeah, maybe you can start by giving us a little background on yourself and Soul Star Space. Sure, happy to do that. I guess I'll uh, reveal my age and say that I have over 40 years experience in space and satellites after uh, earning a degree in astrophysics uh, as, a, as a college student. Uh, I worked for the large aerospace companies Rockwell, uh, Hughes, which is now Boeing, and Space Systems Loral. Started out in, uh, in engineering on classified defense programs, moved into business development strategy and, uh, and to executive management. I also played uh, leadership roles in three space startups. And uh, as a result, I'm excited now to be working with Solstar in addressing the need for space Wi-Fi. Solstar, as you know, is an early stage company uh, but a very interesting one that has demonstrated space Wi-Fi, uh, for example, on two Blue Origin New Shepard launches. And in one of those, uh, it was the first ever commercial tweet from space uh, delivered uh, live uh, from inside the capsule. The co-founder and CEO of Soulstar, Brian Barnett, is a serial entrepreneur, and this is his third tech startup. And early in his career, he worked uh, at NASA and at KPMG. So as you can see, a very strong background for, uh, for Solstar. Amazing background. So what is space Wi-Fi and how is it different from what we use today? Well, of course, uh, functionally, it's very similar to what, uh, what we're all familiar with. The problem is that you can't take uh, Wi-Fi equipment that you might buy down at Best Buy and use it in space. It won't work, and of course, uh, there's no internet provider to connect to. So as a result, there is no commercially available Wi-Fi uh, in space today. Got it. What, what makes space Wi-Fi important, and what are some of the key use cases that we need space Wi-Fi for? You know, the, the Wi-Fi standard technically is very good, especially for, for short to medium range communications, and it's very widely used, uh, as we all know. So as a result, NASA and other agencies and companies uh, have baselined Wi-Fi for space missions. And another dimension is that NASA and other government space agencies are moving to replace the government provided space communications with commercial alternatives. As an example, we know that NASA is in the process of retiring the TDRS network. And as we saw in, uh, in news articles this week, NASA's deep space network is becoming overloaded. So as you'd imagine, there's a wide range of, uh, of use cases, and these include launch, include satellites, includes on-orbit servicing and maintenance, human habitats in uh, both in Earth orbit and in moon orbit, and of course, uh, habitats on the surface of the moon. So uh, a timely example, of course, is India's successfully landing on the moon's south pole last week. Uh, Wi-Fi would be ideal for the communications between the lander and the rover. Another uh, great example is the need for ubiquitous on-demand communications for launch services. Today, launch comms have limited availability and coverage, and the demand far exceeds the supply. So Solstar will provide coverage everywhere and on demand, which will make uh, simplify life, uh, life greatly for the launch services. Absolutely. Finally, as the yes. space economy accelerates uh, with new satellites, base stations, lunar missions, etc., requirements for space Wi-Fi will grow uh, right along with it. Oh my gosh, yes. So many, many use cases and requirements for space Wi-Fi. How is space Wi-Fi different from what we use on Earth every day? That's, that's key. Um, there are several differences, and three of the main ones are that the hardware and software has to be designed and qualified for use in space. And this means, of course, that it has to be radiation hardened. 
Uh, secondly, in space, you're working with much larger distances than on Earth. And so you have to design the solution to be able to connect the Wi-Fi equipment over those large distances and also to be able to upgrade the software remotely from Earth. And finally, of course, uh, there's no Internet backbone connectivity uh, readily available, so you have to provide that as part of the Wi-Fi solution. Great. Can you provide some background on how Wi-Fi in space actually works? Sure. Um, specialized hardware, uh, including radiation tolerant Wi-Fi access points and routers, will be installed in spacecraft, as we've talked about, launch vehicles, space stations, uh, lunar habitats, etc. And this will make it possible to connect computers IOT sensors, various devices, as well as the astronauts themselves into the network. Uh, once the network is established, that in turn will be connected into a commercial satellite network so that the data can be exchanged between spacecraft as well as relayed back to Earth for connection into the internet here. Got it. How will space Wi-Fi change the way space missions are monitored and managed? Well, in one way, uh, it's going to make both narrowband and broadband connectivity available to anyone, anytime. Whether we're talking about a launch, whether we're talking about onboard a space station, rendezvous and proximity operations, etc. Everything will be connected and will enable uh, progress that we're not able to make now. Uh, for example, uh, doing uh, medical research and experiments that we can't do here on Earth. How will how will the space Wi-Fi change? Not change the missions, but actually, when will it first occur? And how will that Wi-Fi be utilized during those first missions? Well, you know, um, Wi-Fi is used aboard the International Space Station today. Um, and if Solstar uh, Wi-Fi equipment is installed on a space station, astronauts and tourists will be able to connect to it just like they do to any other hotspot. But many of the upcoming missions that are in planning and development today will require uh, Wi-Fi for that reason. Uh, Artemis program, uh, one of the big NASA programs, uh, will utilize commercial network hardware and services to connect people and things both in lunar orbit as well as on the, the moon's surface. So we anticipate uh, a number of missions that will require commercial Wi-Fi solutions and will be in, uh, in orbit and launching as early as uh, 2024. Great. Okay. So when do you think we can expect to see space Wi-Fi being broadly available, and are there steps in the progression to getting to that point? Well, uh, broad availability is largely dependent on the availability of commercial Wi-Fi solutions, such as those uh, Solstar Space intends to uh, provide. We've already launched prototype solutions, as I mentioned earlier, and we're progressing the technologies required to make space Wi-Fi available everywhere. So we anticipate that as those missions in 2024 and 25 and beyond launch, uh, we'll be bringing space Wi-Fi right with them. Great. Is there anything else that we should know about space Wi-Fi? Well, from my perspective, I think your audience might want to keep in mind that Wi-Fi uh, will be essential and integral in nearly every mission that's embarked upon uh, going forward. As space tourism grows, as humanity's demand to understand the space environment expands, uh, oper as operations for both exploration and business accelerate, uh, Solstar will continue to develop and deploy the network and communications hardware, software, and services to support both people and companies as we drive the space economy forward. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here today to introduce us to space Wi-Fi and why it is so important to our future in space. It's a pleasure, Lisa, and thank you very much. Absolutely.